In his video titled Proper Size and Scale of Political Order in the Modern World, Dr. Don Livingston discusses the two visions of what political order is. One thought is that political order is natural to man as it spontaneously occurs, a view that was best symbolized by the ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle. The other view is that it is not natural, rather it's artificial or something that we construct, a view represented by 17th century English philosopher Thomas Hobbes. Aristotle was one of the first philosophers to introduce the idea of a republic, which he believed needed to be small in terms of population and territory in order to function effectively. Hobbes, on the other hand, believed that a civilization needed to be very large and run by a central authority in the form of a monarchy or aristocracy. Hobbes argues that without the artifice of government, man would live in a state of anarchy, as people would, could do whatever they pleased at any time. Hobbes contends that this would make for horrible conditions and argue that the only way to escape these conditions would be to give up their own absolute power to a central authority who would rule over them. This idea was that this transfer of power is to an office of government that remains in effect regardless of the individual in charge. This would come to be known as the modern state. Government in this Hobbesian state can be referred to as controlled anarchy, with each person pursuing their own purposes with no regard for anyone else. No matter what people chose to do, in the end, they were all required to follow the rules set down by the government. You could do what you wanted as long as it was done in a civil way. This form of government was extremely impersonal as there was no common culture or natural identity that was re required to be part of the society. All that was needed was obedience to a regime or civil association. Another feature of this form of government is that once established, social orders will be created in the forms of clubs, societies, gangs, and cities. This would establish leaders that would challenge the central authority of the sovereign office. During the late Middle Ages, the resistance to centralization in Europe began, mostly by the church and barons who sought to share in the power. By the 17th century, Enlightenment thinkers began studying the classical civilizations of Greece and Rome and soon discovered republicanism, an ideology which challenged the monarchies and aristocracies of Europe. By the time of the French Revolution, monarchies all over Europe, not just in France, began to fall. The regime that took over in France referred to itself as a republic, one and indivisible. This implied that it was a Hobbesian state, a central power is indivisible in Hobbes's view. This was also contradictory to Aristotle's original idea of a republic, which was required to be very small. France at the time had a population of over 27 million, but still called itself a republic. Thank you.